Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. My name is Eda Freitas de Quadros. It is a great honor to be invited to give a lecture in this important ISRM commission on design methodology shared before by Professor Johnny Hudson and now shared by Professor Chiating Fong. Before I start, I want to compliment the ISRM president, Professor Rizvatio Luzai, and the commission president, Professor Fong. I also want to compliment the commission colleagues and wish good luck for all in this pandemic time. The name of my lecture is Scale Effects for the Hydraulic Properties of Rock Masses and Rock Joints. The scale effect result from the effect of fluid flow in rock masses have been identified on numerous occasions in rock engineering works. Anisotropy and heterogeneity account for several distinct hydraulic behaviors. Anisotropy appears at many scales in rock masses, from the micro laboratory scales to the large macrostructural scales observed in varied geological formations. The figure in the left shows sandstone from the Melbourne area. The majority of rock masses exposed at the Earth's surface are bedded, and beds are in layers, and the others may have varied properties at varied scales and directions. This figure shows uh, uh, a rock mass in Reunion Island, a volcanic island in East Madagascar in the Pacific Ocean. Several successive layers of volcanic rock, mostly basaltic, are shown here. Each layer molds the previous one. There are two significant types of fractures. The major fractures are the boundaries between successive layers that are often weathered. Minor fractures are forming the hexagonal columns induced by temperature decrease immediately after the lava deposition. Water flows through the open major and minor fractures, so preferential through the major horizontal ones, which stay open due to the low vertical stress acting on them. The, the two figures here show contract examples of marked permeability and isotropy. In the left, we see vertical joints dominated in sandstones. This may be related to a previous dominant vertical stress. In the right is the layers of magna flows in basaltic rocks of the Paraná Basin in Brazil, which causes huge permeability and isotropy affecting the flow in small and large scales. The equivalent conductor pattern for this case is about 2 mm measured with illusion tests performed in the contact. When the flow phenomena occurring in different scales are not taken in, in account, the predictive model intends to fail when trying to reproduce realistic fluid flow in the rock masses. The scale effects in better known rock property behaviors like shear and deformability are very well documented in the literature. However, there appears to exist a gap when the subject is fluid flow in the variety scales from the scale of the rock matrix through the jointed scale to the large macrostructural scale of the geological formation. This was the light motif for choosing this theme for this presentation, trying to show some of the important aspects related to the effect of scales in the fluid flow in fractured rock masses. After this preliminary view of real rock masses, the basic scale related to the phenomenon of flow in rock masses can be shown. Uh, in the first scale, uh, it's a general introduction of the intact blocks and discontinuities. The second is the intact rock matri matrix microscale, composed by fissures and interstitial pores. This scale is very important for engineering and for storage of radioactive waste. 
The third one is the individual discontinuity scale uh, formed by fractures and joints. And the last one is the larger field scale. Is the scale effect in rock masses that will be seen and the uh, fact the discontinuous and matrix working together. The two figures show uh, uh, idealized models of blocks and discontinuities. In A, one can see the idealized model proposed by Louis in 1969. Uh, in this scale, in this model, uh, they also pro uh, propose uh, one, one family fracture of aperture E and space S. And in, this, in the second, next figure B, we see the idealized model proposed by Hisley in 1978, showing two fracture family K1 and K2. In this model, they also noted the importance of the roughness of the fractures walls, following the concept proposed by Lomis and Louis. So the rock mass must be regarded as consisting of intact blocks separated by discontinuities referred here to a joint of fractures. At this scale, analysis based on laboratory and field research has shown that the interconnected network of fractures play a decisive role in the hydraulic properties and in the rock mass mechanical behavior as well. The analysis made considering the fractures grouped by families and the geometric parameters of each family form a system, which are in general defined through the use of statistical sampling and the analysis. In oil reservoirs, the hydrocarbons are trapped in the interstitial pores of the rock matrix. The storage and production of the oil reserves in fractured reservoirs depends on the interconnection between the matrix and sets of small scale fractures. It is necessary that the fractures remain pervious and interconnected for the oil production to be effective. Shear stress is helpful here. The figure in the left shows an oriented plug for permeability tests extracted from a large diameter core sample in the oil industry. The permeability of the matrix in such cases can be measured in the laboratory by means of special sample control equipment. Due to the anisotropy, a hydraulic conductive TSO can be formulated using the test results from many plugs extracted from large diameter cores in different directions to obtain KD. KD is the direction permeability along a given direction defined by its unit vector n. It is related to the permeability TSO by the following relationship. The results obtained through tests in main directions of samples taken from the large cores, as shown in the last figure, allows one to obtain the TSO following the same methodology that we apply for the field work, as we'll see later, using the Shea and Neumann model proposed 1985 to determine the components of K. Here are uh, laboratory permeability tests of rock matrix samples from the Barnett Shale in USCI. Uh, they also tested the bedding, the, the, the plugs in two different positions with the horizontal and vertical bedding. Uh, it is very important uh, in these resources to show that the the, uh, the relation between the, the vertical and the horizontal permeability were two orders of or two orders of magnitude difference. And the, the authors also also showed the stress depends of permeability caused by the pore size decrease and the close of fractures at the nano scale. Laboratory investigations in this case are very useful 
also to start to the results in storage of radioactive waste. At this scale, migration depends on the fluid capacity to penetrate through the interconnected pores and fisheries. Different procedures for image are used for this kind of measurement, fluorescent microscopic, laser scan microscopic, impregnation with resin and the other. The figure shows the aperture, the total host of the flow channels and the connective of the, of the flow channels. And the, in this scale, which is very similar to what you observe in a large scale. And here, uh, the figure show the connective and the aperture and talk to us together with the pores. The anisotropic character of the permeability can also be investigated through cores in the scale of core samples. This method is described by Roche and Francis in, in 1977 with the example of Água Vermelha in Brazil. Here in this left figure, we can see the, the, the sample from the body hole in the sample showing fractures that are included in the sample and some not included in the sample. And the, Using this methodology, the permeable tensor was determined and the, in many scales and in many directions of the of the body holes. And the, they obtained that the, the, the maximum and intermediate tensor are order of magnitude 10, 10 minus minus four. And the, the, the mean of so it's order of magnitude 10 minus 6. And here are core sample, real core sample from body hole images showing discontinuity plants. Just the same, the same kind of, a, of a, an ads can be made used samples like this. Discontinuity is often have the most influence on the hydraulic property need in civil and mine engineering. Also in hydrogeological studies where sometimes new large scales need to be taken in consideration, that is faults, flow tops in basalt and the other ones. At the scale of a single factory, the fluid flow process must therefore be known. In general, this is accomplished through laboratory tests, preferable using natural joints of fractures in order to try to define the main parameters governing flow and thereby derive suitable empirical loss. Many laboratory tests has been made in this year in this last 10, 70 years since the first systematic studies were published by Lomis in 1951 and Louis in 1969. Nowadays, the flow loss for, for joints are very well known. However, the most used law in the majority of the modeling is the so-called cubic law to simulate the flow in a fracture or groups of fractures. The figure shows uh, a, a rock is in the, the figure, shows a, a rock joint uh, where the main params govern the flow are aperture and roughness. Roughness interferes in two ways, in the macro scale and macro scale. In the macro, uh, in the micro scale are the roughness of the proper walls. In the macro, is, in the macro roughness scale, is the undulations, breaks, and the other one. A, I, and A, J are points where flow changes directions in a fracture. This has influence on head loss and therefore influence the hydraulic conductivity of the joint. And here we see a, a large, a real joint in the field, a large regional joint fault in the basaltic rock of the foundations of Nova Vandava Dam in the Paraná Basin in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Effective hydraulic aperture measured with long tests 
sh uh, showed uh, the magnitude of 1.8 millimeters. This is very large. A drip tunnel may have only 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters hydraulic apertures. And the, however, this uh, this kind of of uh, joints in in dam foundations are injected with cement growth. Here we can see the details of the the joint, like roughness, aperture, and the undulations. And when the water flows through a joint, there are also zones of mobile and dead water in in the in the joint. The figure here shows some dead end pores where the water can be accumulated, and the and the, the flow, the fluid velocity profile. Also, some zones where vortex can occur, and the, the establishment of the uh, uh, the limit, the boundary, the boundary meter, as proposed for SLIST in CIS ninety six. When apertory roughness and the head loss are highly affected by the scale effect during the flow in a rock joint. The figure in the upper left shows what actually happens when a Lujon text is performed in a body hole on the scale of a single joint. In the field, the aperture and the roughness vary substantially and they have inevitable influence of the points of rock contacts we see in the joints. In this figure, we, we represent a body hole and the water penetrating the joint. And here we see that it Close to the body holy walls, there is a zone where the flow regime is turbulent or transient. And after some after some time, uh, the flow is laminar. This is due to the very high head losses that occur when the water flow in a rock joint. There are also other other head losses in the entrance of the water in the fracture. Before we turn for the next few scale, the cubic law is introduced and discussed, discussed here. The equation for the cubic, cubic law is shown here where a k, k, k is isotropic coefficient of hydraulic conductivity, g is, is the gravity, e is the aperture, and the and the D is the coefficient of kinematic viscosity. According to the cubic law, a Q is proportional to E uh, cubic, to the cubic of the aperture. And if we, if we think about an aperture of one millimeter, this, uh, the application of this log is a value of 10 square for the permeability. The permeability in the cubic as, is, as this G and 12 are constants at the, and, the, and the also the, the coefficient of kinematic viscosity. If we have a temperature of 20, 20 degrees, we can we can have this this constant number to calculate uh, permeability in a joint using the cubic law. The cubic law is the most applied concept in the world for the design and model of the hydraulic behavior of jo rock joint and rock fractures. Even if this law is quite simplified to represent the realistic behavior of the flow complex in the rock mass and in a real fracture, it is used has been disseminated around the world, mainly because of its simplicity. Theoretical investigations of flow process in rock fractures are usually performed using the parallel plate analogy. In such analysis, fluid flow is assumed to be steady, viscous, and laminar. Under this hypothesis, the solution of Navier stocks 
equation leads to the well-known cubic law that in fact is the Poisson law proposed in, in the end of 19th century, which states that for a given hydraulic gradient, the discharge through a fracture is proportional to the cubic of the aperture. It is therefore that the inflows in civil engineering in the mine can vary dramatically. It is here one parent for to say that the Poisson law, when it was proposed, was proposed for the, uh, the flow between two parallels played perfectly smooth. Then it is an, an analogy to use the cubic law for fractures or joints. In the field, the analysis is made to consider the influence of fractures grouped by families, based mainly on their orientation, direction deep, collected through geological surveys. Two approaches can be followed in the field. This continuous approach considers the hydraulic behavior of discrete fractures, taking into account their geometrical characteristics, such as orientation, space, aperture, roughness, and trace length. Discrete fracture network models follow this approach. However, due to the difficulty to characterize the aperture and roughness, the, these models generally use the cubic law. The continuous approach considers the geometry of the fractures grouped by families and the interconnection of the fracture network in the scale of interest to the rock engineering work. And also, they uh, considers uh, one representative elementary volume. In this case, a corresponding hydraulic conductivity so can be formulated based on the the execution of the dimension tests in the field. Then now we see the we see what we have in the larger theory scales in the network of this the effect of network of this discontinuities. Then we show a resume of some concepts behind the field work the scale effect in the hydraulic 3D tests performing the field in two practical, two practical field experience. Here we see the cl a classical illustration from Louis in 1974 relate the characteristics of the fractured medium to the scale of the engineering work. Uh, in, this, in this figure, uh, Louis tried to show it when you, one can you have easily in REV and in the, in the uh, when the uh, in in figure one we see in two we see the represent the representation of some continuous homogeneous isotropic or an isotropic medium. In in figure two we we see uh, an heterogeneous medium composed by a rock rock mass uh, with two different space of fracture showing. All this related to to the to the dumb, to the base of a dam to show the scales compared to to the to the dam base. And the, in A, we see a discontinuous anisotropic medium. B, we see a discontinuous homogeneous anisotropic. And in, in, in uh, figure four, uh, we saw the representative of a discontinuous medium. These red, these red traces are uh, what we should do if you want to take a representative elementary volume in a rock mass like this. Then we see a small volume that's just the rock matrix to include two fractures. We have two, the representative elementary volume would be this size and to include the, the, the fractures uh, that are interfering the burn dumb base, we should increase the representative elementary volume. 
In the schedule effects for fluid flow has also been studied through computer simulations. One of the early results made on this subject was performed by Jane Long in 1983. She varied the diagrams to show the scale effect within a fracture network. The figure shows the scale effect on the permeability tensor due to the variation of the fracture density. Then here, when the, the medium approach uh, to a rep uh, when the representative elementar volume approach to, to a uniform medium, we, the, rep the tensor is more clear. And now we, uh, we show two practical field experiences in respect to the field scale. Uh, the first day scale effect is observed in the subway tunnel under the Piero River in the city of Sao Paulo. And the second day scale effect observed in the foundations of the Port Primavera Dam in Paraná Basin in Sao Paulo, Brazil, under the execution of the three-dimensional hydraulic tests. In the field, we have a network of discontinuities, as shown here. And in this, in this figure, we show three fracture family, and the, where Q, K, I is the specific flow to each fracture from it. J is the gradient and K, Q is the resultant. Then it, because of the anisotropy, the, the direction of the, result, the resultant is different from the direction of the J. If the medium was isotropic, this two vectors would have the same direction. And now is the concept for the three-dimensional test performance. Here we see uh, three body holes. This is a small scale and in, in, in one of the body holes, fluid is injected or, or, or suckled from the, the rock mass, and in the other body holes, uh, in the intervals, for uh, by intervals, uh, the, we observe what happens in the water head, uh, uh, dep which depends on the flow path as showed here in these clear lines. To analyze the flow in three-dimensional scale, we use the same the mathematical model proposed for interpretation by Shea and Neumann in 1983. The same mathematical model can be used to interpret permeability tests in the anisotropic plugs used for the analysis in the oil industry, as referred in the beginning of this lecture. And now we, we can show the, the scale effects uh, resulted from the field dimension test performed in the tunnel and the Pieros River in the Sao Paulo city. These two figures show the typical characteristics of the granitic Gnaski rock in, in the region of, of the tests. The, uh, in the left side, we see the Milonitic, Granitic, Guinness lithology. And in, in the right side, we see the Milonitic, Biotitic, Guinness lithology. It is easy to observe that there were very different the character of the rock in, in the region where the tests were performed. And in the next screen, we see the block diagrams resulted from the analysis of the structural geological survey performed in the site. 
the, the, here the structural uh, uh, we we can see the fractures in relate in relation to the axis of the tunnel. And uh, now the, we see the, the equipment arrangement used to perform these hydraulic tests. The central multi multi packer device is moved from hole to to hold and the effect of flow pump out or injection is option is resisted at multiple locations and elevations by the piezometer array as I referred before. The, 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 the equipment used to make this set is normal in straddle pack. And for the tunnel of Sao Paulo city, we use uh, in this arrangement to which allowed us for the calculation of nine permeability tensor, and the, that means in this arrangement, in this arrangement, we could investigate uh, nine scales of tests. And the result for one of the scales is shown here. The same, uh, the same flow passes, a uh, similar flow passes is reproduced for each one of the scales of tests. And, and using the flow paths and the calculations based on the model showed before, we, we determine the permeability tensor for the five, for the, the scales of tests as showed for these scales. As shown here, the anisotropy relation for the K maximum in in these scales uh, varied from 103 to 7, according to the arrangement. For the scales, one can see the arrangements that was shown before. And now we show the scale effect is uh, resulting from the, the three dimension test performed in their hydraulic rock masses of the Port Primavera Dam Foundation in the Paraná Basin in Brazil. The, the foundation, the direction permeabilities were affected by the dominant geological structure at the each scale of test. This, uh, this scale effect can only be registered by means of three dimension hydraulic test performed at variety scale. Here we have three different behavior in, in each different scale of test. And the, 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 the tests were performed in basaltic rocks, showing micro, their micro flows and the, and the large flows. Then there was a big difference in the test results, which results in high anisotropy relation. And the, the, the tests were performed in this uh, arrangement and the, including three different scales, ABE, ACF, and ADG. And the, the, the size of each scale were 5 meters, 15 meters, and 40 meters. And here is an example for three body holes of test the flow direction in one of the scales. And here, the characteristics of the hydraulic conductive tensor showed by the eigenvalues, the anisotropy relation also for each scale of test, in the K maximum, in the K minimum for each scale, each, each scale of tests. The anisotropy relation was very high in the large scale AGG, which was the large one, uh, because 
the high influence of large discontinuities observed in basaltic rocks. Finally, we come to the conclusion. The discussion examples shown in this lecture prove the importance of the scale effect when analyzed flowing rock masses from the micro scale of the rock matrix to the macro scale of the engineering works and the geological formations. Another conclusion related to this subject is the fact that despite the importance of the measurement of the direction permeability, that is the tensor of permeability for rock engineering works like tunnels, dams and underground excavations in general, this is seldom considered in the design, despite the fact that many of the disasters that many of the disasters that occur in underground excavations are due to the influence of water. Rock mechanics, rock and rock hydraulics had advanced due to the accumulated knowledge of the rock mass behavior in the four scales mentioned in this lecture through the laboratory and field tests. New advances in modeling will depend on the use of the new technologies aiming the advances in laboratory and field tests, as we saw here. Thank you very much.